So, and has, I've talked about knowledge, I've talked about research and information. What about support? Well, since my foray <coughs> into Camden Street in 1976, that little group moved into the Methodist Chaplaincy in Manchester University. Then it became the Concord, Northern Concord in, in Canal Street, where I met it again. Uh, nationally, there was the Beaumont Society, and some idiot had, a, had an idea that it was good to uh, all create an organisation called the Self Help Association for Transsexuals, Shaft. <laughs> we tried to tell her. And then there was the Gender Trust and Presbyterian. But let, I'm going to finish in a moment. <laughs> Press for Change. I worked for Press for Change between 1993 and November 2007 when I had to move on. Uh, if I hadn't moved on, I would be bankrupt by now. Because the organisation I'd worked for all those years got by on less than £5,000 a year. We are asking for donations from people who have no money, who had largely experienced complete exclusion from the workplace, even though we finally got employment protection in the law in 1999. We got that protection in the law uh, because of the work we'd done to take an employer all the way to the European um, court. Um, we also got the Gender Recognition Act. And it's remarkable to think that we actually managed to push two major pieces of legislation through Parliament working from our bedrooms, paying our own way, paying our own train fares to London for the inter interminable visits. But actually, we're getting to the point now, I fear, unless we do something very seriously, very quickly, that those tiny little organisations like Press for Change and Gender Trust are not going to be with us 12 months from now. They really are on the edge of survival, pushed to exhaustion. Because when you've been doing this, getting on 20 years, you do get to be tired. I'm now looking at my retirement. I can't do the sort of things I used to be able to do 20 years ago. And I see that in my former colleagues as well. And when those organisations are gone, what will there be? Because what we need to ensure, if there is to be a future for the rights of transsexual people, and the same goes for lesbian, gay and bisexual people too, is that we stop relying on the victims of discrimination, people like me, to do that work. I will only believe that we've actually made some progress in society when the heads of all of the agencies in this region, all public bodies, take it upon themselves to really do what the law says they should be doing and to pursue my rights because I pay the same. I pay the same for a health service. When I go to see the help, my doctor, I expect the same treatment as everybody else. Otherwise, I want a discount. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, this strategy, to me, is bang on the nail. Because it identifies the circle that locks in <coughs> my discrimination. And if this process helps to break that circle, then perhaps we can move forward. And I can look back from the comfort of retirement in a few years' time and think, yeah, the world really has changed. Thank you.